Now this is the Moss Effect paint from Dirty Down and is the third in their series from their water soluble range. Now you can get some really interesting results with this stuff, but what I found, it can be a bit of a diva. It takes a little bit of tender loving care. So therefore today I've got eight top tips for you that will help you get the most out of this stuff. But also we're gonna have a look at some of the effects you can get. So for example, we're gonna have a look at the basic moss, but we're also gonna have a look at some things like algae in water and a little bit of toxic goo as well. Sound good? Let's go. Now one of the main reasons this stuff can be a bit of a diva is that it needs to be warm, but not too hot and not too cold. If it's either too cold or too hot, then it just won't work. You'll end up with a very dark green matte paint, basically. So how are you gonna warm it up? Well, for starters, putting this stuff near any sort of flame is a really, really bad idea. This stuff is really, really flammable. So you could try the hairdryer, but that's not ideal but I have found the ultimate way of getting this to just the right temperature. But I'll show you that in a bit. Right, so even looking at the bottle, there's a few interesting points to note. The first is that it is a smooth finish. If you put this on a flat surface, it will you'll get the same sort of greeny, mossy effect, but it'll be completely flat. That has its pros and cons, but we'll come to that later on. The second thing is that it is extremely matte, which once again has its pros and cons. You need to be aware of where you're gonna use it. And finally, it is as semi-permanent as the other ones we've already looked at. So you need to keep this dry, but it also means we can play with it a little bit, similar to how we use the rust, for example. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, I've created a whole playlist of different ways you can use these Dirty Down products. So I'll put a link for that down in the description, and you can check that out later on. Now, the second part to this first tip is to mix it really, really well. Now there is a mixing ball bearing in there, but that alone could take quite a while to even come loose from all that clag at the bottom. So you might need to get a stirrer or a tail end of a paintbrush and really get in there and stir it up and get all that pigment back dissolved into the paint. If you can hear that ball bearing really rattling around really easily, then it's a much better sign that it's pretty much ready to go. Okay, so to demonstrate this next tip, I've quickly knocked up a kind of a cobblestone type base. Now it looks okay at the minute, but let's add a little bit more detail in here with this moss. Now this next tip is a, admittedly a bit of a stylistic choice, but I would definitely say in this scenario, for example, that less is more. So rather than just drowning the model in this, then just place it exactly where you want it to be. And on that note, think about how moss actually grows out. So moss grows where that water is kind of collating, and it's kind of a damp environment. Now water will flow by the path of least resistance. It doesn't necessarily flow out in every direction equally. So for this example, I'm going to kind of go out in different directions, kind of where the water's kind of flown a little, a little bit, also add a bit more interest and variety into it as well. Also in this particular scenario, I would suggest loading the brush up and then kind of dropping it into it and let it flow along those recesses rather than kind of painting big chunky lines because you don't really get straight lines in nature quite so much especially with this sort of thing so therefore just dabbing it in gives it a much more organic look also remember when you're doing this if you're going to do a deeper layer it's going to give you a darker color a very very thin layer will give you a lighter and brighter color so just keep that in mind when you're placing it so the next tip is how you can use this within a water effect. So the test piece for this example is one of the test pieces we had from the AK Interactive Still Water video. Now as it stands at the minute, it looks quite good, but I want to add in a bit of algae into this water. I've had an idea, so I want to try out two different tests here. The first one, I'm gonna put a very fine layer of like, almost like algae on top of the water. So for this, you're gonna want a nice mottled effect. So you want to make sure that the paint is nice and warm. Now, I promised earlier on that I'll show you the ultimate way of warming this stuff up. And believe it or not, I've already shown you. So you could try the hairdryer, but that's not ideal. But I have found the ultimate way of getting this to just the right temperature. But I'll show you that in a bit. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Make sure it's done up properly, then stick it in your pocket so it's warmed up nice and gently by your own body heat. Stick it in there for half an hour to an hour, 
before you're going to paint and it will be at the perfect temperature and you'll get a beautiful result. Let me show you what I mean. So I've now warmed this pot up and I'm now going to just, just dab it nice and gently, paint it on top of this dry AK Interactive still water. Paint it nice and thin and also with dabbing, almost a stippling effect. Now there's different ways you can do this, different effects you can get with different techniques. And once again, I've looked into that more with the rust effect. So rather than going over those techniques again, I'll put that link down in the description for you and you can check it out later on. But for now, simply stippling it on will give you a really nice effect. Let it dry and you end up with something like this. Now you could leave it like this and it looks like algae floating on the water surface. But another option is you can make it look like algae suspended in the water. Simply very carefully put another layer of that AK Interactive still water over the top of that or whatever water effect that you're using and it will sandwich that moss effect into the water. Now it may make it go a lot darker and you lose some of that mottled effect but it gives a really nice suspended matter effect in the water. Okay so this next batch of tips I've used much more of an industrial type scenery piece. However the same principles will apply for any any terrain you're doing, whether it's fantasy or sci-fi or historical or whatever else. Now you may remember that on the bottle it said it is a very smooth effect. There's no texture to it at all. However, moss in real life is very, very 3D. It's quite a raised mass. So therefore, just painting onto a surface, especially if it's a flat surface, it's not gonna give you a very realistic effect. So therefore, if the texture is not there as part of the model, then you're gonna need to make it yourself. So to do this, I'm going to mix up a very small amount of milliput, roll it into a very, very fine sausage shape, and then using a sculpting tool, just apply it to where I want that moss to be. Now, I am deliberately going a little bit over the top on this to make it a bit easier for you to see what I'm doing. However, you can make this as subtle as you like. So I'm going to kind of put it around where you may get a bit of leakage from this hatch here, and therefore where any water or whatever's in this tank has seeped out and collated on any of these surfaces and then kind of slowly dripped down this tank. I'm also going to put a little bit around this tap, sort of outlet pipe here. I'm going to make a bit more of a toxic goo coming out of this. So I've given that some time to dry and I'm just going to paint over that milliput with some dry spatter from Army Painter. Now this is quite a warm brown and I'm going to use this to A, seal that milliput but also to give it a bit of a base coat as well. Now you could play around with this with any color you like. Okay, so that brown color has now dried and I've got the dirty down moss water soluble paint. I've given it a really, really good shake, stirred it all up to get all the, all the pigments all mixed up and also I've warmed it up nicely and just stip all that moss effect paint over that brown painted milliput. Now, especially if you're doing quite thin layers, you will see some of that brown kind of coming through that green. So that can be quite an interesting effect and something to take advantage of. And I guess based on the undercoat color that you use, you could create all sorts of different kind of variations and schemes with this. That could be an interesting experiment to play with. So what I've started to play with it a little bit here is, is can I kind of use it to make streaks, streaks of grime coming down this? Now this is a very different effect to the AK Interactive or the Vallejo streaking grime. Also bear in mind if it streaks out, you're still going to get that subtle colour shift in there as well, which you wouldn't get with the standard streaking grime. It's a very different effect, but one worth playing with. Now you can use a brush and streaking it out, and also, or you could just use a finger and simply just rubbing it out and streaking it down the surface. Now bear in mind this stuff is not good for you if you get it into your mouth or any sort of mucous membrane. So just make sure you've washed your hands really, really well after doing this. Now these dirty down water soluble paints work really, really well in layers. So I'm also letting it dry and then going over it again in places to build those layers up. Now one other thing I wanted to try out was I've painted on around the base of that tap that we put the, the mini put and the brown paint on at the start. So I've let that dry and you've got the same sort of effect. But what I'm now going to do is I'm just to get some of that AK Interactive still water and just drip it onto that. So I've now got much more of a liquid coming out of that tap. And I didn't get a shot of it. So what I then did was I got the old paintbrush and loaded up with that dirty down moss effect paint, touched that into that still wet drip of the AK Interactive still water. That has reacted slightly with it, and you've now got a quite a nice looking liquid green goo. 
So the Dirty Down Moss Effect paint is a much more versatile product that I've done, I first gave it credit for. So I can do Moss Effects type stuff, I can do slime, I can use it on both fantasy based terrain or I can use it in much more sci-fi type terrain to create a deep, dank, dark environment. So it's perfect for an industrial hive complex through to a fantasy castle. So I really hope you found that useful. If you did, then please hit the like button. But also, there are so much more things to play with. And I think you might like this video right here next.